everyone. Welcome to Retrocoms. Today we have a special handset here in front of us, the Motorola StarTac. This is a device which I believe is the missing link between the MicroTac and the flip phones of the early 2000s. Looking around the device, you'll see that it's a lot sleeker and slimmer than its MicroTac predecessors. And compared to clamshells of the early 2000s, it has a few oddities and quirks here and there. The most notable being the fact that the battery is on the lid of the phone rather than on the back and that the screen is here at the base of the phone. The speaker and the screen are not on the same part of the phone as in, in early 2000s devices. And as you can see there's these little terminals in the back to set it in a charging cradle. This device is also notable for another reason. If we open it up here and look closely at the screen, down here on the bezel we can see that it is a dual band device, which means that this particular model supported analog and digital, which helped it to bring in the age of digital cellular coverage, which allowed for more data to be transmitted, but it didn't cover as wide of an area as analog. The fact that digital allowed a wider variety of data to be transmitted and analog covered more area has made this phone a very versatile device and very much a sign of the times it was in. Here are what appear to be volume keys and maybe some other sort of function key. Here is its proprietary charging port. Over here, this looks like a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack, but I'm not sure. And other than covered in dust, I'm not sure what this little portion is back here. I'm not too familiar with the StarTac since my only interactions with this device have been as a collector. But as you'll see, it's a lot closer to modern phones than the handsets I've shown you guys earlier on. I'm going to go find its charger, and we'll see if we can get any signs of life out of this old girl. It took me a little while to find the charger for this phone, but I did. Like a few other phones, well, many other phones from the time, it has a proprietary connector. As you can see by this bit here, it looks kind of similar to the old iPod chargers, but not quite. And now, ah! She's already showing us some signs of life. Let's see if she can get powered on here. There we go. She might show the phone number, so got to cover that up. There we go. It's alive. <laughs> After all these years, this phone was produced in 1997 or so. So it's impressive that and still works like this. Now, it has a few functionalities, but I'm not sure if the person who gave this to me erased their contacts and whatnot. So, but as you can see there, it has a phone book. There's the volume adjust. And, okay, what is this? Well, apparently they still have their home number saved. No area code, so I have no idea where this person could be from or anything like that. So, let's get out of here, though. So, their old our home number at the time that this phone was in use is not being displayed. have no idea where they're from. Can't, can't even remember who gave me this phone or where I got it from, but at least we know that it's working. You can see up here, every so often, this little red light will blink. And if you noticed here on the screen, it's giving a reading of no service. Now, even though this is a dual band phone and it can still get service through the digital network, I'm pretty sure that the provider that this was on is no longer around or that it's no longer supported by today's networks. 
but at least we can still see a little bit of its functionality. We can see that its battery still holds up fairly well and it was able to recognize that it was charging as soon as it plugged in and other than being able to call or text, if it can text, it may be able to because it has this little message button down here at the bottom, but at least we know that it's still for the most part functional. And I call that a win, especially for a phone that's 20 years old. All right, so the question that I'm gonna answer in every video that I do, would I have used this phone when it was out? Honestly, definitely. It's a good alternative to the micro tax of the time and it's, it's very portable easier to hold than some of the previous models, fits well in the hand. I believe it would be comfortable to talk on. The only problem is it's kind of limited on the ports, but I hear 2.5 millimeter headsets were quite common at the time. It seems rather feature rich and apparently it's pretty reliable. I mean, it's still on after, after all this time. I just pulled it off of the charger so I don't believe this three bar full battery reading, but the fact that this battery is still able to hold a charge is impressive. So I would have definitely used it because from what I can see and what I can feel in the hand, it's a good phone. It's not as robust feeling as the micro tax were. It feels a little bit more plasticky, a little bit more cheap, but it, it still feels like a good phone. So I would have definitely used this Motorola StarTac here. So that about wraps it up for this episode. But what I will show you now are the last few of the phones that I have from the 90s. We're about to transition into the 2000s where I'm going to get more in depth into feature phones and things like that. I love phones from the 90s, but honestly, phones from the 2000s are more my specialty since I was at the point where I needed a phone during most of the 2000s. So, the last few I have, I'm going to focus on these two that look a bit older first. These are some AudioVox handsets. Now, I would charge them up and do full videos on them, but I can't find their chargers. I don't know where I've put them or if I even have them and if they will even come on for us. They, they look like old wireless landline handsets, but I don't think that's what they are. I think they're cell phones. But at the same time, I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not seeing a SIM card or anything like that, but this antenna seems more like something you would find on a cell phone than on an old landline. Because they did have some landline wireless handsets that came with a little transmitter base dock type thing. And they look very similar to this, but I don't think that's what these are. They look very much like cell phones and have buttons that I believe are pretty cellular specific. Like with this function keys and things like that. I, I don't believe most landline users would have had digital handsets like this with a phone book feature programmed in. Just removing this one's battery or trying to to see if there is any sign of a SIM card or anything like that. Not sure about these though. Not even sure that they're that they're cellular, but I have a very strong thought that they do, a very strong theory that they are cellular phones. And also they have these nice little cases. You wouldn't put things like that on something that was just going to stay in your house. 
And so the next phones I'm gonna show you are some old Nokias. Now I assume that these two Nokias and those two audio boxes were from the mid 90s, after the micro tax, but before the star tax. So, and here's this one. And I know that these are cellular phones because, I mean, it's Nokia. They never made any landline equipment for the US. I could never get these to charge. I couldn't ever get them to even give us any sign that they still worked. Uh, but they, but all four of the phones feel really nice in the hand and I'm sure that they were very comfortable to talk on. I just don't know very much about these. Speaking of Nokia, that'll kind of serve as our sneak preview into what's coming up next episode. Because next time, once we get into the early 2000s, we can't talk about that period without talking about Nokia. I know I've been covering a lot of Motorola stuff lately, and I promise, there are more phones than just Motorola's in my collection, as you can see here with these two Nokias, and here with these AudioVox handsets as well. And I promise, I'm not just some Motorola fangirl. I have a lot more phones where that came from. And I hope that you guys enjoyed the next, the next set of videos that I'm going to get into because I'm certainly going to enjoy it because I love the early 2000s and feature phones. That's where things start to get interesting. You could definitely tell a cell phone from a wireless landline handset then. And you'll see technology really start to evolve over the course of these next few videos when I walk you through various types of phones from that period. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Link for Rift Valley SoundCloud is still down there in the description. Go check out some of his work if you like electronic music and you like listening to new artists and checking them out. He's a mastermind behind my intro music, so go check his work out. Um, and come back next time to see even more retro communications technology. Retrocom signing off.